Good evening. Welcome to Single, Saved, and Satisfied, where I, Akara, talk about my walk, my experience of being single, never married, saved, and to the point where I'm at the age where I'm, I, I, I feel a little satisfied. I'm not trying to get mad and nothing like that. Um, if you, we, We're going to get into it because we're going to talk about longevity. Longevity when it comes to relationships. Is that a sign of uh, success, a successful relationship? Okay. Being able to keep a man. Have you been married for a long period of time to the same person? You know, or have you been the longevity of being single? Don't be ashamed that you've never been married. I am 50 years old. I ain't never, ain't never been married. And I'm all right. I'm all right with that. Do I believe I might find my man? I probably will. He better catch me before I get too. I, I'm, I'm 50. I'm real used to being single. I have come to the point where I enjoy it. It's a beautiful thing. An awesome thing. Okay. I've even got to the point where I ain't even trying to have a, a, a marriage where we, we, do we have to stay together? I mean, can he keep his own place? Or can I keep my place? Because when I get sick of him, I want to be able to go on to my own place. Because I'm so used to being alone now. But at any rate, let's get into it. So I had a friend where... I remember, and she's still a very good friend of mine, very good friend of mine, who said, and I had made a comment about um, something related to relationships, like, oh, I wouldn't deal with that. Oh, child, oh, hell no. And um, she said that in her mind, she thought, well, who is she to talk? How she haven't had a long lasting relationship at all, ever in her life. When's the longest relationship she's had? None. Well, I'm pretty sure that made her feel good. But then I'm thinking about like, well, damn. It made me feel some type of way because I haven't had a long term love relationship with a man. Because I am cisgendered and heterosexual, and I love me some men's. Okay? I love me some men's, some naturally cisgendered men's. Okay? Nothing against the transgender men. More power to you, my brothers. But I'm talking about the natural man. The, the, the cisgender, the one that came out and agreed with the gender they had been assigned. Okay? I like those men's. Okay? Okay, I like those men. And, um, you know, I'm just sorry. Well, and, but have I had a long relationship? The longest relationship I think I've had in a loving relationship has probably been mm, nine months. Okay. And I don't call, I don't count an off and on type of situation where, um, like I have a little friend, friend that you know i love him dearly but i know he got a woman i know he got a woman he ain't telling me he got her okay but he do i know he do i know i am not the only woman in his life and he has a main chick or at least the main one that he feels responsible for okay and um so he doesn't count because it's not solely just me and him. And no, I haven't had any, oh, mm, uh, uh, I'm almost forgetting my college uh, boyfriend, like, whom I asked to marry back in the 90s. I think we've had, we had like a maybe a two-year relationship that lasted after I moved here to Georgia and everything. I met him at Prince George's Community College. Um, and I think that was probably the longest relationship that I could technically say that I had. Um, but outside of that, nine months, six months, nothing, never lasting over a year. 
Okay. Now I have people who I had relationships with who became friends. I was friends with afterwards, but you know, and, and technically I wasn't in a relationship like a boyfriend girlfriend relationship. Like you know, that's my man. I'm his woman type of situation. Okay, we were friends with benefits plus. Okay, we stayed together. He stayed in my house. He lived with me, but he wasn't my man. Okay, it's it really isn't complicated. The fact of the matter is, it really was a relationship, and he was my man, and I was his woman, but. He didn't want to see it like that at the time mm, is what it is, but he's my best friend right now. And now I love him more than I ever did then right now. Cause I, I just want the best for him, but either way, that's a long lasting relationship, but it's not, we're not together. You know what I mean? And, um, I, I think when my friend said that, what is he talking about? I told myself like, girl, don't feel bad about what she said. When's the last time? You know, she said that to make herself feel good. But I want to address the fact that does longevity really mean that it's a successful relationship? If we go back to the 50s and 20s and before, there was plenty of marriages that lasted 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Marriages that lasted, they were, they still together but they hated each other's guts. And they were only together because the wife didn't have nowhere else, didn't feel like she had anywhere else to go. You know what I'm saying? And the man eventually, when he got old, who was going to take care of him? That woman. Okay? Because she felt obligated to stay. You know? Longevity... In a relationship, if you've been, there's a lot of women and men that stay together in toxic relationships because they don't think they can get any better. They don't know any better. Okay? They don't know they have a right to self-love. You know what I'm saying? Some are afraid to be alone. You know what I'm saying? Or what society will think of them if they're single, or if I if this, what is this going to say if I divorce after six months of being married? Well, that would say that you realize that I married the devil, and I'm smart enough to get the hell out before I'm locked in. I can't. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Some people stay in they in long term relationships and they are hating life. Some are st they're still in a relationship because hell, the, it, it's it's a need based relationship. Yeah, I need a place to stay, and you got a place to stay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's just never got out of that relationship. I have a very close friend, family member that that's basically what their relationship is. They've been together for 15 years. And I'm going to tell you for a fact, Mundo, that this person, that family member, is only with the other person because that person is helps the Keeps them in his home. You know what I'm saying? They help pay the bills. You know what I'm saying? There's gold diggers that's only with that man because they pay the bills. But meanwhile, they're getting their butt whooped. They're being um, verbally abused, physically abused, gaslighted. Is a very toxic relationship and they stay in that relationship because it benefits they get to stay in a house as opposed to uh, the ghetto in a, a, an apartment tenements you know welfare housing 
they get to stay in the house and drive a car. Ah, yeah, he calls me a fat blob every other day. But because of him, I can have this car. Because of him, I get to stay in the upper echelon of blah, blah, blah. I know this man doesn't really love me. But I'm getting to be live a life of the rich and famous. People get married for clout. People get married for business purpose. Like, and now that I, I, I mean, like, now maybe that's my Capricorn kicking in, but I get it. I mean, marriage is more than just the flower and cherries and uh, love and sex and beautiful attraction. It should be a entered into with much understanding and thought. Okay, this is the person that you will be with for the rest of your life. Do I even like this person? One, just like, do I like hanging around with this person? Two, is this someone I can grow with? Some you just, you don't know until you get in it. You know what I'm saying? And then you realize, ooh. Ah, I thought you were one I could grow old with, but I guess I can't. Because you didn't found you didn't show your true colors. Some people don't show their real, real colors. They show the red flags before you put the ring on it, men. Before you um, um jump the brooms, ladies. They they all they show the colors. Okay. But it gets amplified and magnified. Once you jump the broom, once you put the ring on the finger. Okay. Is this someone you really can grow with? And now just because you argue a lot, I mean, look, you got to remember that you're two different people. Raised two different ways in some cases. So there's going to be things that you disagree on because y'all were raised different. Okay. And so, yeah, you're going to be de- raised different. You got your two different ones. But then you have to ask yourself, but can I get past this? Do we, are we both working on it? Like um, Chris, Chris Rock was saying in his tambourine stand up, he said, a lot of people say, oh, it's, uh, um, it's hard work to work on relationship and marriage. It's like, eh, it's not hard work. It's hard work when only one of the couple of the two are trying to work on it, on the relationship. But if you're both working on um, the relation, um, on the relationship and you're both playing your part, whatever the part you two agree upon, not what society says that you're supposed to do. I think that's the problem. When society, I mean, when you base your relationship off of what society says a man should be and what a woman should be, too, we're going to go there a little bit. Um, but some, you play your part. You're going to have those hiccups. You're going to have your disagreements. But if you understand your part and that we're both working on it, we're both changing and growing together, it's not really as hard as you think okay now let's talk about you know what society thinks or what have you heard that society thinks should be done in relationships the roles that you should play women supposed to be barefoot and pregnant is that still a thing okay um, and a man should be the main breadwinner, the big breadwinner. Okay. Should he be taking care of her? Or can a man be a stay-at-home father and still be considered the head of the household? I say it can. If you agreed upon that, don't worry about what other people say a marriage is supposed to be. I know a couple. Well, I, I have someone that I know. That she says that me and my husband don't even sleep in the same bed. I'm 
was like, what? In my mind, I'm thinking, you get married, you're supposed to sleep in the same bed. They're like, oh, no, no, no. We don't sleep in the same bed at all. And I love my husband to life. So we don't sleep in the same bed. Who told you that is supposed to be? And I had to think about, so who said that, is that, I have, that we have to sleep together or live together even? Or live, you know, conduct your lives every day together. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, like, you don't have to be there all the time. Like, um, uh, I'm trying to think who said it. I think it's one of my good friends who was saying, like, Dolly Parton and her husband been together for years. And they don't even, they live together because, you know, they're rich. So they have a, she has a big mansion. Or they have a big mansion. And she stays on one wing and he stays on the other. And when they need to go out together or go to an event together, they come together and and they do their things and they enjoy life. The things they like doing together, they do together. You know what I'm saying? Or if you saw the recent uh, Sex in the City series on HBO Max where um, Miss... Mr. Big and Carrie got married, and Carrie kept her her apartment. She kept her apartment. So if she, you know, when she won her alone time or whatever, she went to her old apartment. Who says that just because you are married that you, you have to live together and sleep in the same bed together? Okay, everything that looks good and longevity doesn't mean good and happy and successful. So don't you ever feel bad because you haven't had a long-term relationship. How about maybe you've just dodged lots of bullets and you have been blessed. I'll say for me, I've dodged a lot of bullets and I've saved a lot of heartache and pain. Uh, I've been blessed to been saved a lot of heartache and pain and to have saved a lot of heartache and pain by being married to someone and then having to divorce when I realized this fool is the devil or he realized I'm the devil, you know, and he can't just whatever. He can't be with me or maybe he realized I can't keep my penis in my pants. I want to sample all the women of the world and or men. You know what I'm saying? And maybe I just kind of jumped into it, or maybe I got into this marriage for the wrong reasons. And you, they separate amicably. Longevity doesn't mean successful. Okay? Longevity in relationships. Are you happy? Is this one? Does it complete you? Maybe they do. Maybe they don't, okay? But I have been blessed. I The way I see it now is that I have been so blessed to be able to learn who I am, what I really like, what I really don't like. Do I actually, I've got a chance in the last couple of years to actually live alone. No children. No husband, no siblings, no live-ins. And life is absolutely sweet. I enjoy living alone. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Okay? So it's going to take an awesome man to be able to come in and um, be able to disturb my peace that I have here. You got to be greater than the peace that I enjoy living alone. Hello. At any rate, that's all I have for you. Don't feel bad if you have never had a long-term relationship. It's okay to sample until you realize what you want. Okay? 
And if you've never been um, single, well, God, thank God, you haven't had to experience marriage, failed marriage, being married and failed marriage. Maybe you just never was meant for you to be married, and that's okay. Or maybe God want to get you married when you're older. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you'll find the happiness in being single, saved, and satisfied. That's all I have for you all. You have a good evening. Remember, love yourself, love your neighbor, and stay authentic. Y'all have a good one now. Bye.